Hello guys, what's up? Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you Havana, the capital and largest city of Cuba. Havana is an exciting and fascinating city with lots of history and culture. From its beautiful colonial architecture to its lively nightlife, this city has something for everyone, so come along with me and let's explore this beautiful destination. Hello guys, what's up? Welcome to Cuba. After many, many years of dreaming of being here and finally in La Habana, this is one of those destinations that you want to visit once in your lifetime. It's a very interesting place with a lot of history, very beautiful architecture. People here are very friendly, so nice. It's such a magical place. So if you've never been to Cuba or you want to know how it's like, in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about Havana, where to eat, where to go, and everything you need to know about this amazing city. And let me tell you, I've been very shocked by Havana because it's actually a very beautiful place. Uh, yes, it's a little bit, you know, run down. Some streets look like they need renovation desperately, but the city is beautiful. There's so much architecture, there's so much color and it's just a very unique place one of the things that i've loved the most about this place is the people people here are so welcoming so friendly Okay, so there are a few things you need to know before traveling to Cuba. The first is that you need a visa. Obviously, it depends on your country, but in my case, I'm Mexican, so the only thing I needed was the visa. By the way, the visa is very simple to get. You get it at the airport before you check in. You don't need to fill any format or anything. It's very, very simple, so don't stress about that. Now, the easiest way to get to Cuba is by plane. Now, in my case, I flew from Mexico City Airport and I used an airline called Viva Aerobus which is okay it was actually really good i didn't have any problems they were on time and everything was fine after our three hour journey from mexico city we landed in jose marti international airport now this is the place where you want to exchange all your currency and buy some internet cards i think this is the place to do it because if you do it in the city it'll be harder and i think you should do it right away when you land once we were ready, we took a taxi from the airport to the city that cost around $30. Now, as you can tell, we had some technical problems with the car. Uh, yes, when you get to Cuba, you need to be patient because things are not the way they are in our countries. You know, things are a little slower. Some things, you know, have delays, like for example, gas. People there make lines that last for hours. So things are completely different in Cuba. I remember I read somewhere that said that arriving to Cuba for the first time still feels a bit like entering into a parallel world and I definitely felt that Cuba is a very unique and different place and let me tell you it's been one of the biggest culture shocks I've ever had but it's also one of the most beautiful destinations I've ever traveled to. So in terms of accommodation, there are plenty of options in Havana. You can stay in a hotel or you can also stay in an apartment. Now usually when I travel, I prefer to stay in apartments because I think it gives me a more authentic experience. I get to sort of live in the city. And on this trip, we stayed in two different areas because I wanted to compare which one was better. This is the first apartment we stayed in. It is located in an area called Vedado. Vedado is a beautiful area. It's sort of like the posh area of Havana. And personally, I think this is a much better area to stay because it's a lot more quiet and safe in my opinion.
The reason why we stayed in two areas is because first we arrived to Havana, then we went to Varadero, which by the way I have a video about that city in case you want to check it out. And after Varadero we went back to Havana and we stayed in this apartment, which is located in Old Havana. Personally, I didn't really like to stay in Old Havana because at night it was kind of scary to go outside. So I don't know, personally I think it's a lot better to stay in Vedado. But Havana is close to everything and during the day you don't need a taxi or anything so obviously it depends on your preference. Okay guys, I'm gonna split this video into two parts because there is way too much to show you guys about Havana. So stay tuned for part number two of this video where I will show you places to eat, places to go in the city, the main attractions and information that will help you to plan your trip to this incredible city. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys on my next video. Adiós.